What is going on everybody? This is Mike and Dirk with Terrible Gaming and today we just wanted to kind of uh, go through our reactions to uh, E3 announcements. Um, so it's going to be a little bit different video, uh, kind of like the one that Dirk did a couple days ago. Um, and it's just going to be kind of our general uh, recaps sort of on what we thought of E3. So. Yeah, we mainly just wanted to talk about what we liked overall from the show what we liked, what we're excited about, what we're not excited about, what we dislike, just kind of some general stuff about that. We haven't actually like compared notes at this point, so we're just kind of legit talking about what we thought, what we're excited for. Um, I 100% or I did not watch 100% of the shows, neither did Mike, because nope. you know we both have a life, um, and we weren't paid to be there, obviously. So <laughs> this is just kind of like secondhand content that we got from watching videos. Hashtag reading maybe stuff. next year. <laughs> yeah, reading online, watching online. A uh, lot of stuff like that. So uh, if we miss something that you're excited about, be sure to let us know in the comments below. Or if you disagree with something that we thought about it, please let us know. We really want to hear what you just, guys think. Just it's, blast us. Just blast us. Yeah. Because uh, there, actually there's some stuff I am excited about, stuff I'm kind of meh about, and stuff I was kind of disappointed about. Um, so, yeah, let's kick it off. Um, I'm going to go with things I'm excited about. Okay. Good. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so – I am excited about the game lineup for Sony. I think the games they have coming out are cool. Oh, yeah. I was excited for them last year when most of those games were announced, like Days Gone, God of War, The Last of Us 2. Um, trying to think off the top of my head what it was announced. Those are the main ones, really, that stuck out to me. I did not go back and double-check and compare notes. Those are just what were in my memory bank. Um and I'm excited for those, and I'm excited as they get closer. They're not coming out this year, which is a bummer, but I do get the E3 is kind of a big picture forward looking uh, event. So, you know, that's kind of how it goes. You get, you fall in love and they get heartbroken kind of all in the same three day, <laughs> yeah. four day window. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I am excited about that, though. Um, there were some really cool games. Uh, I mentioned a couple of them already. Days Gone. I'm super excited about that. And I am super excited about it's not just another zombie game. But the yeah. zombies are another piece of the environment that you interact with that can be used against you and that you can use for yourself, as the developer showed with the alternate uh, scenes that they showed and how they handled the main video they showed off at E3, the alternate video, the, show, the alternate video that showed off how you can like do things differently or how weather changes and how that impacts how the game plays. I thought that was really cool. So that made me more excited. That it wasn't just another. I mean, I mean, I'm looking forward to killing as many zombies as possible, and they have a crazy amount. Oh yeah. But the fact that they're environmental, I'm really excited about that. I think for me, that's going to be one of my top games I'm looking forward to. Yeah. Um. One of the ones I wanted to talk about that was kind of a like a, a surprise for me how much I really thought it was cool was uh, Hidden Agenda. You sent yes. you sent me that one. I originally didn't see it in the uh, in the original yeah. presentation, and then uh, yeah, Dirk ended up sending it to me later. And Hidden Agenda, I, so I want to be excited for it. Uh, I, I don't want to uh, get my hopes too high on it, though, because it seems a little gimmicky. Uh, like with the, you know, you can have like your your side-by-side -side screen uh, little thing that you can do with your uh, with your cell phone. Uh, it's, a, it's a little, it's it seems like it might be a little gimmicky, but at the same time, it seems like a uh, an awesome uh change of pace to your general games because it does it's from the same studio i believe that did until dawn which yep. was which was very similar to uh the way that this game looks where it's like a choose your own adventure but this one's multiplayer and uh you know people that are like you're playing with could get a secret mission on their handheld device that'll uh you know it, it they'll have like a a hidden agenda that uh, they they're trying to do something that is gonna backfire for the rest of the team, um, and you don't know who it is. So it it seems like a really really interesting game. I'm pretty excited to see how that how that pans out. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it reminds me a lot of those uh, of those of a party I went to as a I think a teenager like one of those like murder mystery parties where you show up and you assume uh, yeah <laughs> like an, an identity that's exactly the first thought i i thought of when i saw that no so the the thing that that i really was thinking about when i originally saw the game was the the handheld device reminds me of watchdogs a lot mm -hmm. um 
and uh, you know you don't necessarily have to use the handheld device, but you can, and it just kind of enhances your uh, your gameplay experience, which I, th- I thought was pretty cool. But at the same time, uh, with Watch Dogs, it was still super gimmicky when when you used it. It wasn't you know, you know it wasn't a game changer or anything like that. It was just kind of a fun little dumb gimmick. Yeah, I think this will be a little bit more involved than that is my is my assumption. But my my thinking is is this is going to be a game that has maybe two or three, uh, maybe four, depending upon how many parties you can assume the identity of, of replay value. And I'm assuming that the mission is going to be kind of somewhat short, so I don't anticipate it being like a a very long game to play. And that after a couple playthroughs, you'll probably have explored most potential consequences and gotten the gist of it. Uh, that's my initial thinking, but I'm still excited for. It. I think it's a really cool direction they're going, and a really fun way to take things for people who like to stream, to have interactions with the fans, or you know, you can do yeah. stuff with other people you're collaborating with. So I think that's really cool. I'm really excited to see that. Yeah, another another thing that was uh, that I was pretty excited about was uh, the Shadow of the Colossus remake, uh, the yeah, the I HD remaster. Yeah, I played the I played the original one, not originally when it came out, but I played it after it had been released for a while um and yeah that game is really really fun it's it's kind of it's more of a puzzle game sort of where you oh. have to like solve a puzzle on pretty much how you defeat the colossus or colossus sees colossi colossi Col- colossus <laughs> um and yeah that's that's the general uh gist of it is like you know you have to figure out how you're supposed to take care of these uh these colossi um by like you know you could climb up like uh like grass and stuff that they have on the backs of their legs that looks kind of like hair you can like climb up them and then you could reach Ooh. different platforms and it's like a little platformer at some points where you're trying to like run and jump and uh land on different platforms and find other areas and different ways you could climb up and then stab them in the head a bunch <laughs> oh, good to know um the other thing that I was excited for, just to kind of list them off quickly here, is uh, Detroit 2 Human. I, again, think that's going to be a really good game. I think it's going to be kind of short, and I'm assuming a couple of playthroughs are going to reveal the majority of the gameplay. So I really don't anticipate that being, again, a game that you can play for long. And the other one I'm looking forward to playing is Spider-Man. Oh, yeah. Um, the only concern I had was the quick time events. I'm not a huge fan of those taking place of actual combat and decision making. However, if it's around narrative pieces, like, like that could propel, you know, it's designed to help you interact with the story being told. So you're not just sitting there slack jawed. I'm cool with that. I just hope it doesn't take over in a lot of other areas of the gameplay so you can make snap decisions and try new things and stuff like that. So that's what I'm hoping for. And I have a feeling it'll probably work out well. Yeah. And honorable mention to uh, Marvel versus Capcom. So many characters that they announced for, uh, at E3, there's there has to be like uh, like 2.4 million characters now <laughs> on that game. So cool, really excited about that. Uh, and to switch gears real quick, we'll s- switch over to uh, the Microsoft stuff that we uh, that we liked. Um, I I think me and you are on the same page with uh, Cuphead. Looks amazing. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited that's finally coming out. Yeah, as dumb of a name as that is, it just it looks completely gorgeous. Like it, I like the name. I think it I think you know exactly what you're getting, Cuphead. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> sure. Um, but I don't know, uh yeah, I, I it's it looks it looks amazing. It looks like a fun little platformer. I'm just hoping that it's not one of those like you play it twenty minutes and you're done because it took them so long to uh to animate all the yeah. all the cells and stuff i'm hoping that that's not the case um but it does look really really fun um and yeah the how stylized it is and it just looks great yeah it really does look cool and i'm excited for that um i am excited that they do have the new xbox scorpio i think that is overall xbox good... one x i can't oh, i had the x <laughs> I just no too many X's and it's just I I'm just gonna forever call it Scorpio. I just can't not because Scorpio is a ten times better name than it X. Is. Yeah, you're right. Um, unless like X gonna give it to them and it's gonna be an Xbox One X. That's the only time that's gonna actually work out for me. <laughs> um, but yeah. short of that, it will be Scorpio. Um, I am excited that's out. I think that that hardware 
you know, the best console ever made, all that good stuff. That's true. I like it. I can dig it. I am excited to putting it out. I have no plans to buy it at this point in time. Yeah. So I, I agree with you with like a hundred percent of what you said on your other video was that like, it's just a, it seems like it's just another way to stream stuff. I mean the, the, uh, you know, the, the 4k is going to be awesome. I'm sure yes. the games are going to look gorgeous and it would yes. be nice to actually utilize my 4k TV as opposed to just, you know, not really yes. utilizing it. But I, I don't know, man. It's it's a it's a little bit it's a little bit underwhelming for me. It, it is, and I've actually thought about it, and I I don't feel as harsh as I was in my previous video because yes, it is multimedia, and again, it's just another device to do it. Now I don't have a 4K TV. I, I hope to get one soon, but right now I don't have one, so I don't really care about 4K, um, and I don't play on my TV anyway, so that's another issue. But I think it's good to have because it sets the bar. It, there's there's a tangible bar that's been set to push game developers to go that route. So I True. do like it True. for that. It creates a stretch goal. Yeah, but, I, could, I could see that. Yeah, but for me, um, <clears throat> excuse me, but for me, there's nothing that makes, there's no reason to get it because any game that I can get for Xbox Scorpio, I can play in my my normal Xbox. Yes, it's going to look great on the Scorpio, and yes, it's going to be amazing. But part of my concern is that games aren't going to be designed to utilize the Scorpio to its power. They're going to be created to the, to, the, to the lowest common denominator, the weakest chain in the link, which is those early adopters for the original Xbox. And... The games are going to be optimized for that, and I'm afraid part of Scorpio's beefy 4K 60 frames a second power is going to be used to try to optimize the game, and it's going to be, end up spending more time trying to graphically increase things as opposed to pushing the boundaries of what it can do and render and and that actual like computing power and making a brand new bigger world. Like if they had made the Xbox Scorpio as the default normal console. And like that yeah. was it, and Xbox guys were going the way of the Xbox 360. As much as that would be terrible, and I wouldn't like that, that would all that would actually make more sense to me because then that's the new standard of that you're going to try to push that thing to its limits versus the Xbox One and the Scorpio is just kind of you know beefing everything up type thing. I don't know if that makes sense or if I'm even right, but that was kind of my thinking process behind that. Yeah, let, um, let me give you let me give you my beef real quick on the okay xbox one x so with the ps4 pro and the xbox one x originally when the ps4 and the xbox ones were coming out they're like oh these are going to be 10 year consoles you're not going to have to upgrade your consoles like you know everything is awesome buy this console buy ours because ours is going to be good for 10 15 years whatever mm -hmm. and now it's like how far out are we from the the launch of the ps4 like what three years I think it's been three or four for both. Yeah, and now it's like, oh, hey, here's these better consoles. Like, we know you just spent all your, you know, your hard-earned money on this console. Here's this new one that is going to be better, and it's just going to seem like you're wasting your time if you don't have this newer, shinier console. That's my that's my beef with it right now. Um, I, I'm not, I don't have any pl plans on, like, upgrading my consoles because for one right now i'm not really playing my xbox one or my ps4 i'm i'm playing on the pc um yeah not saying there's anything wrong with playing on consoles it's just right now my preference is on my pc um also because you know just how much easier it is for me just to have my pc and play my games and do work and do whatever i want on here um but yeah it just it just seems like a money grab that's what that's what's kind of frustrating to me with it is that it's like it, an, it's like another five hundred dollars I have to spend. Actually, really realistically, it's like a thousand dollars because it's like I I would want to buy both consoles. Yeah, and it really it is because there's no way that the Xbox division is going to survive on one round of console sales. Yeah, I mean, I have buddies who bought the original and then buy, they have the S now. Yeah, they're not going to upgrade because really Microsoft gave us no reason to. There is nothing that I can't do on the Xbox One or the PlayStation 4 that I can't do on the Xbox Scorpio. Except so, the 4K. That's about yeah. the... And then yeah. on top of that, if you get the uh, Xbox One S, I believe that one outputs 4K. 
So it does. I don't think. I think that's more multimedia than it is for anything else. Yeah, I, I think it is too. But that's primarily what I'd probably use it for. It's just like 4K streaming of uh, like Netflix. If I wanted yeah, to watch House of Cards, House, yeah, House of Cards and just a yeah, 4K. Yeah. Um, yeah. But but real quick, uh, before we get move on any further, I did want to uh, talk about Anthem uh, because I know I know you're not as excited for that game as I am, but. All I have to say is Anthem looks like uh, like Destiny and like uh, Iron Man mixed together, and it just looks like a lot of fun to me. Yeah, I went back and rewatched the trailer, and I think it's Destiny, Titanfall with a hint of the Division. But yeah, it, it does look cool. And when you started pointing out different, like you know, hey, that's Iron Man. Hey, that's what's my dinger. I definitely see that, and. <laughs> I think again. I think Anthem is cool. I think Anthem is cool, but it reminds me of the Division, and I didn't even play the Division. I, I didn't once I saw what it was, and I played the beta. I was out. Nope, I was done. Um, so hopefully I'm hopefully I'm wrong. But well, the, again, that's not an Xbox One X exclusive. That's for all the consoles. It yeah. just runs better on the X. That is which, that is true. Yeah, which is also be on for PC. So and also yeah. coming 2018. So yeah. Yeah, so there's no rush in that. We'll see what happens as things shake out. Um, but I, really, my my overall from Xbox was I'm glad to have a console. I have no reason to own it. So they need to give me a reason why I need to be an Xbox One X customer. Yeah, Microsoft, you <laughs> listen to this video and you send us them. Um <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and supporting our channel. If you enjoyed this video, click right here for our latest upload or click right here for another episode. And click our channel icon in the middle to subscribe.